Hi, welcome to CE UTM webinar number 30. Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera. Today we are going to have another interesting topic, making a world of different. Engineering crucial roles. Engineering play a crucial role in solving a lot of major problems throughout the world today, including helping to save life and creating new technology advancement that improve the way we live. To prepare the engineering student to face the challenging a uh, challenging world ahead and contribute to the society. We bring three panels from different uh, areas of engineering to share to share their knowledge and thought on different on several issues related to engineering. This session is brought to you by School of Chemical and Energy Engineering together with CEE UTM Center of In Engineering Education under Industrial Seminar and Profession SETK 1511. Let me introduce myself. My name is Norhayani Osman. I am a senior lecturer in School of Chemical and Energy Engineering, UTM. I joined UTM in 2004 while I was doing my master. It is pleasure for me to become the chairperson for this session, okay? so. For those who are new to this uh, to this channel, please subscribe, like, and share this channel to your friends, families, and colleagues and network. Okay, as we are going to have more fantastic and interesting videos to share in future, not only limited to engineering education. Okay. Without further delay, let me let me introduce to you our moderator today, uh, Dr. Mimi. Please bring in Dr. Mimi. Hi, Dr. Mimi. How are you? Hi, everybody. How are you? Good. Thank you. Okay, let me introduce Dr. Mimi. So, uh, Dr. Mimi is an associate professor in School of Chemical and Energy Engineering, UTM. She is also a professional engineer with Board of uh, Engineers Malaysia and Chartered Engineer in Institution of Chemical Engineers UK. Okay, so she is also a member of Global Young Scientist Academy and she was a Secretary General of Malaysian Young Scientist Network under the Academy of Science Malaysia. Uh, Science Malaysia. Okay, so she is very active. Uh, re representing Malaysia in few uh, research uh, meetings and um, meetings and events. Okay. Um, before I pass this session to Dr. Mimi, so I would like to remind the students to listen to the discussion very carefully and please ask questions. Okay, Dr. Mimi, over to you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Yani. Uh, the MC for our session today. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to all our honorary and distinguished panels of the forum, fellow lecturers, students, and all other audiences in Malaysia, as well as those who are joining us today from outside Malaysia. And it is uh, actually a good morning for Dr. Ku Ji Yi, uh, yeah, uh, who are also with us here today and uh, not good afternoon because uh, she is now in london and it is uh, we are made to understand that it is still around uh, 6 30 in the morning now in london so thank you very much uh, dr Gigi, for your willingness to be with us uh, today this very early morning so uh, welcome to our virtual forum session this week we are very proud to present a very interesting topic for our forum entitled engineering overview uh, sorry, uh, entitled. Uh, I don't remember the the, the, the letters of the uh, the letters uh, topic of the of the forum because I made this uh, the the writing earlier. But I, I guess you have been introduced to the title earlier by the MC Dr. Yani. But basically, this forum is organized as part of the industrial seminar and profession course uh, for our first year chemical engineering students in UTM. And we basically have almost 180 students and uh, around six uh, lecturers who are involved in this course. And we are also being told that there are also other audiences, uh, not only from this course, but also from outside uh, UTM 
and also from schools and other higher uh, learning institutions who are joining us today. So this forum is also co-organized together with the Center of Engineering Education, University Technology Malaysia. So before we start, let me briefly introduce uh, you all to our panels uh, for today. Our first guest is Dr. Muhammad Shafiq Hazwan bin Roslan. He is currently a lecturer at Chemical Engineering Department, University Technology Petronas, UTP. He is also wearing a hat as researcher in the Institute of Contaminant Management and a member of Center of Research in Ionic Liquid in UTP. And he is also an associate fellow of Center of Lipid Engineering and Applied Research in UTM. He received his first degree in chemical engineering from UTM in 2011. So basically, he is your senior. yeah. And he received his PhD also from UTM in the year of 2016. His current research interests include supercritical fluid extraction, separation process, uh, and uh, bioactive compound extraction. He is a graduate engineer and technologist an associate member of the Institution of Engineers Malaysia, IEM. He has received many awards, including gold medals in teaching and other learning festivals and other chemical engineering related competitions. He has so far published more than 30 research papers, conference proceedings and book chapters. So uh, now let us all uh, welcome Dr. Shafiq. Let, let's meet Dr. Shafiq. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam, Dr. Uh, Shapu. Hi, Dr. Shapu. How are you today? Uh, good, good. How are you, Dr. Mimi? Uh, I'm good also. Thank you very much. So, I hope Dr. Shapu uh, have had your lunch yeah, in, apa, di mana? in Toronto, is it? Yeah, Sri Iskandar. Uh, Sri Iskandar, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I guess uh, similar to UTM, UTP also now have all your classes online, kan? Correct, correct. I just finished my class online. Okay, so thank you very much for accepting our invitation in between okay. your busy schedule. And now let us together welcome our second panel. Yeah? Okay. So our second uh, guest of uh, the forum is Dr. Ku Ji Yi. So Dr. Ji Yi and me, uh, a little bit of history, we had a very long uh, special relationship together. I mean, I used to teach her like more than 15 years ago. Uh, I think I Taught he, I taught her process control, I don't remember. And me and uh, her batch, we had a, a very close and good uh, relationship because they are also very active as students in students' association and other co curriculum activities, not only in us, uh, in their academic uh, line. So, uh, Dr. Kujiyi now is a technical manager at Consumer Healthcare GlaxoSmithKline, right? Or also more known as GSK in United Kingdom. Uh, she has been working with the company since 2012 as senior material scientist, then making her way as technical leader in manufacturing and supply chain. Currently, she is a product owner and lead supplier relationship team in the company. And she received her first degree in chemical engineering also from UTM in 2005 meaning she is also your senior student, yeah? Then she received her master and a doctorate degree from the University of Nottingham uh, in the UK. Uh, sorry, her master degree in the University of Nottingham before she received her doctorate degree in Imperial College, London, in year 2010. She has published uh, 18 articles in peer-reviewed uh, scientific journals with more than 200 citations as well as two book chapters. So now let us bring in Dr. Kuji. Hello, salam. Hi, good morning Hi. From, from London. Yeah, good morning. So uh, it's still around 6.40 in the morning, yeah? Yes, that's right. It's early, but it's okay. I think it's nice to chat, chat with everyone else. Yeah, thank you very much for your willingness to be with us despite your the, the, the time difference. And then how is it in London? Is it already cold? I mean, is it already winter because it's it's November now? Yeah, it's so uh, it's autumn now. It's autumn, so you can see all the leaves falling down. Um, it's getting colder. Uh, mm. Definitely, the the winter. We're heading towards the winter, and 
as you know, it's going to be a difficult time with the the current pandemic. So we are we're, we're, we're bracing that challenge. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we wish uh, all safe for you, your husband, and your boys. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we will talk more during the foreign session. G. So now let us introduce uh, you all to our third panel. Our third honorable panel for this forum is Mr. Abdul Hafiz bin Abdullah. Mr. Hafiz is a technical professional staff uh, in the Department of Industrial Hygiene at Upstream Health Safety and Environment Petronas, uh, KLCC, since 2015 until now. Before that, he was an executive of industrial hygiene at Peninsula Malaysia Operations Petronas, Chari Gali, Sendran Bahad, Kerti since May 2007 until August 2015. So he's, he's always been with Petronas, uh, I think, throughout her, his career life. He has been in the area of safety, process safety, for more than 10 years. His expertise uh, is in developing and implementing industrial hygiene program to protect employees and contractors from occupational health hazard and risk to promote healthy workplace and work culture. They're aiming at uh, excellent HSC performance. And he uh, is a, he is a chemical health risk assessor, a CHRA assessor, uh, an assessor that registered with the DOSH Malaysia. He is also radiation protection supervisor registered with the AELB Malaysia, noise risk assessor, Oh, she, he has a lot of qualifications, yeah. And he is also an honorary secretary of the Malaysian Industrial Hygiene Association, Miha. He received his bachelor degree in chemical engineering from Curtin University of Technology in Western Australia. So now let us meet Mr. Hafiz. Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and very good afternoon everyone. Good morning to Dr. Ji. How are you Mr. Hafiz? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we are very, very grateful that you can take off uh, a little bit of your time uh, from your work today and be with us in this forum session. So yes, um, from your CV, I, I mean, you look young, but I guess you have been working like more than 15 years, right? I, I mean, you are not that young and by, uh, by age 10 because your, yeah. your experience show that you have been working uh, like more than 15 years, something like that. So yes. we are very grateful to have uh, you with us today, yeah, Mr. Hafiz. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Mimi. Thank you. Yeah, so as we all can see today, interestingly and co coincidentally, we have all chemical engineering background. Uh, as our guest uh, today, but currently working in different environment and nature of works. So uh, a little bit on the flow of the program today, basically we're going to ask several questions to the panels. Uh, then at around 3.15, 3.10, uh, we will stop a bit and take questions from you guys, the audiences. So you guys can start uh, thinking or posting any burning questions at the chat uh, space there in the YouTube uh, uh, page. And then uh, we will continue with the second cycle of the forum, starting from 3.30 p.m. until around 4.10 p.m. Uh, so that we can entertain uh, more questions from the audience until 4.30 p.m. before we close the session. So the, uh, with this introduction, uh, without further ado, because we have a lot of things to ask to the panels, I think we better start now. So the first question uh, that we would like to get a, a little bit of you know, a uh, brief uh, introduction to the whole topic uh, for today's forum. Uh, let me ask uh, Dr. Shafiq. So basically, Dr. Shafiq, uh, what do you think uh, the best to define what engineer is all about and what are the basic rules of an engineer? <coughs> okay, first of all, thank you, Dr. Mimi, uh, for the invitation to this particular forum. Uh, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon to all the viewers uh, currently watching this channel. Uh, back to the question posed by Dr. Mimi, um, what defines an engineer? Uh, normally, currently we look at uh, engineer as a problem solver, but currently we look at uh, engineers as uh, how the, we solve the problem without compromising the sustainability part of in our, in our world. So that it has to be, uh, uh, the decision making has to be very tough, but 
it must be justified based on validated assumptions and also data driven assumptions okay so that is how engineer works okay so in the future in the near future uh, data driven uh, decision must come first because it is based on the historical data that we already uh, studied in the previ uh, previous years that comes to this particular digital uh, era of digitalization. Okay, based on the World Economic Forum, uh, the latest one being, uh, being released just a few months back, uh, they listed that the three of the most important skills need to be have by each person for the next future is the first one is analytical thinking and also innovations. And this is what engineers do. We innovate uh, how a better way to solve the problem that's been posed by the industries. And also second one is active learning and learning strategies. This is where we can play around and also have equip ourselves with more skills uh, that is actually available to us through uh, online platform, just like what uh, UTM is currently doing. And the third one is complex problem solving, which is normally being counted in the industry. So I think this is the three things that uh, the students and also anybody who are venturing into engineering need to look at whether you are in designing process or whether you are in R&D or whether you are in operation. Ultimately, you have to deliver what the company requires you to do, but at the same time have to follow the sustainability and the ethics in engineering. That's all. Okay, that's a very uh, good tips, uh, Dr. Shafiq, yeah, that you can give as a bring back uh, atau bring home notes for the students uh, so that they can prepare themselves from now. So the next question, I would like to dedicate this question to Gigi. This must be answered by Gigi, no others, yeah? So the role of an engineer in overseas, how the differences in culture or working environment influence, influence the role or acts of an engineer? And perhaps maybe in order to explain this, you can give us or share with us some examples, uh, you know, to, 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 to to somehow enlighten us how the different in culture, you know, because we are brought up in the Asian uh, type of uh, upbringing, how, how the different culture may affect us uh, to, to, to function as a, a good engineer, right? Yeah, hello everyone, good afternoon. Um, it's great to be here and thanks to Mimi and of course UTM as well for, for, for inviting me to, to this forum. Um, I think we all believe that the world is getting smaller with technology, just like today. I can interact with Malaysia like just a click away. So I don't really see myself as like engineers in overseas or in the UK for that matter. I think with like uh, in the for, for even for now for future collaborations can happen like with te with technology. So it I think with this year is quite critical because with the COVID crisis and pandemic, it certainly changed the way we work, the way we connect together. So this topic uh, question is very important because um, it, it allows us to recognize what's the differences in culture, in background that the people we've worked with. Um, I think as with any global company, I work in GSK. So on a daily basis, I interact with people from different backgrounds, different countries and different functions. So it's not only talking about different uh, cultural upbringing, but also like people uh, train in a specific uh, um, uh, experience or degree like finance, supply chain, procurement, R&D and so on. So I think key for uh, all of us when we're working in such an environment is to recognize the differences. There's a the use of language, um, acronyms that may be specific to engineering or specific to people from Malaysia or from UK. Um, and then we recognize people, the style of working, how we can solve challenges, problem, and also how we, uh, in terms of creating that relationship between people as well. Um, I think it is not a bad thing to have like uh, people from different culture. It provides a uh, fresh pair of eyes to look at things from a different way. Um, I think that that's what helped you as well as you grow, as you grow as an engineer. Um, and I think uh, to put an example is, uh, for example, in my team, in my te technical department now, so we have people from uh, um, obviously different country, but we have like uh, chemical engineers, we have uh, uh, physicists, we have chemists, we have uh, pharmacies. So we're all doing a similar role. Um, but then at the same time, we can tap into each other expertise if we have a specific problem. Um, maybe each of us approach the, the, the problem from a different way. So uh, I think um, 
having that it allow us to uh, to to develop ourselves and learn to be more adaptable. I think that that that's really helped us to as an engineer to see uh, everything from a global view. So overview, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much to you. That, that, that is a very good sharing, especially for most of us. I mean, especially the students who are not yet maybe uh, you know experienced um, traveling to uh, to overseas and so on. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, the third question is uh, very relevant to uh, Mr. Hafiz because he has been with the industry like forever. So um, Mr. Hafiz, how important the knowledge in engineering, especially what you learned in the university before, is, uh, is useful or applicable when you work in the industry? This one, you really need to brainstorm the students yeah, so that they will really appreciate what they learn in the university. Okay, Mr. Hafiz. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mimi. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm very good uh, afternoon and morning for OTGE again. So, um, again, thank you for having me um, as part of the panels for this forum. I'm truly honored uh, yet humble to be part of the uh, panels for today. So, the question is about how important the knowledge in engineering, okay, um, especially in chemical engineering, because most of the participants here are actually the uh, undergraduate students in chemical engineering, right? Um, so how we can actually relate engineering that we have learned in at university and how is it applicable uh, when we actually enter our uh, the, enter our work later. So um, my answer is basically it depends on the industry that you work with and position or project that you are assigned to in the company. But nevertheless, whatever it is, engineering foundation, the, con the concept that we learn at uni before is very uh, essential and very crucial indeed. In my case, for example, I graduated in chemical engineering um, long uh, long time ago, okay, maybe more than 14 years ago, okay, and later I worked with oil and gas industry in Petronas, assigned in HSE department, health safety and environment department, specialized in industrial hygiene. Although industrial hygiene is not really, um, I would consider as a core engineering discipline, but still the knowledge I gained from engineering studies back then has provided me personally a good foundation, a good foundation to prepare and, and progress further in my career in the company that I work with. And of course, learning is an endless journey. It does not stop at uni. Along the way, throughout your career, you have to keep on learning, build your competencies relevant to the profession that you are pursuing. Um, in industrial hygiene, for example, we develop and implement program and measures to protect workers' health from health hazards at the workplace. So the programs may include hazardous chemicals management, including fugitive engine, noise and hearing conservation program, human factors engineering, radiation protection management, heat stress management, and many more. So certain knowledge that I acquired at university back then are very much relevant, and I can actually relate to the Ahish profession that I'm currently pursuing. Say, for example, we are talking about hazardous chemical management. Of course, um, when it comes to ventilation, to control hazardous chemicals, I need to uh, have a knowledge, a good knowledge on chemistry, physics, and also fluid mechanics. And talking about uh, noise engineering control to reduce uh, plant noise emission, I need to be able to at least read and understand uh, piping and instrumentation diagram, PNID. Knowledge on engineering mechanics and mathematics are also uh, very crucial here. Um, so there are many ways somehow uh, or rather that you can actually connect with the engineering knowledge that you have learned at university. So basically in engineering, we are taught to use the knowledge of scientific and also mathematical uh, principles to solve technical problems. Okay, just like what uh, mentioned by Dr. Shafiq earlier, it's about uh, using the data, historical data, okay, as an engineer. So the key here is about technical problem solving. So I think that is actually the essence of engineering application at work. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Mimi. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Hafiz. Yeah? So not only he covered the, the, the core subjects uh, in chemical engineering, but also back to science, right? The physics and mathematics, which is very, very true. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Hafiz, yeah, again. So uh, now we back to uh, Mr. Shaf uh, Dr. Shafiq. So uh, Dr. Shafiq, uh, in your opinion, besides the common branches of engineering, the traditional one, right, that, that we were being 
uh, told about when we were small, since we were small, like uh, on the branches, former branches of engineering, for example, civil, chemical engineering, mechanical, electrical engineering. Uh, but what are the new emerging branches of engineering that uh, now have become the trend and highly in demand uh, globally? besides the, the conventional branches of other uh, engineering. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mimi, for the question. Uh, I would like to agree with Mr. Hafiz that most of the engineering discipline that we learn, maybe some of it uh, is not being related to our work, but in, towards the fundamental work is very related, okay, on towards the uh, subjects we learn in the first year, second year, on the chemistries and everything. Everything has to, pay, to be placed inside the uh, working environment. Okay, back to the questions. Uh, Dr. Mimi posed a very interesting question based on our conventional engineering that we know from other from the one that we've been taught to based on our school years and everything, civil engineering, electrical engineering, chemical engineering. So what is the future trends for engineering? So I think uh, the future trends is still there. The engineering discipline will be there. Chemical engineering will still be there because some people will have to design the plants, some people will have to design the bridges for in, uh, in uh, civil engineering, and also the new steam engine for mechanical engineering. Uh, so uh, it's still there, but uh, the future is on the digitalization of this particular area. The, the digitalization means that uh, how we connect the dots uh, from actually the data to the actual uh, to the actual things that actually happens in the site. So um, uh, digital uh, digital digitalization happens uh, in across the value chains from the input to the process towards the output and then goes to the market demands goes to the uh, consumer strand is it being increased or decreased based on the uh, consumers usage and also the uh, availability of material so based on these particular things the prescriptive or even the predictive analysis can be done in every discipline it is not being related to each and every discipline because if you look at uh, a certain plan, it involves all discipline of engineering. It involves physical, uh, uh, chemical engineering. It involves electrical engineering, civil engineering. But how do you place that into an area where uh, digital is being implemented inside that particular site? You have an automated plan right now, but uh, it can be deciding the factors for you. But at the end of the day, the human side must be there. The understanding and the fundamental must be there. So that is how the importance of the uh the the university studies everything can be taught but as much as you need to have an experience on what is happening to the sites okay okay so Thank you very that, much. based on this you can have more on data analytics right. some collaboration with the visualization departments and how being data being processed and then that comes to the conclusion on the output that you're trying to put for the uh, company itself okay thank you Okay, Shafiq, thank you very much yeah, for your uh, lengthy explanation on that so that uh, students can now open up their perspective and view on the other more uh, interesting and variety of branches in engineering, right? So mm -hmm. uh, next question is uh, for Dr. G. Uh, how engineers from different fields uh, interact with each other when working in real industry or company like in GSK? I mean, you are not working with all chemical engineering uh, people, right? You are also working with other uh, disciplines of engineering. Can you a bit share on that? Even though I think you have touched a bit uh, on that matter just now, but maybe a, a little more elaboration on that, yeah? Yes, that, that's right. I think I echo Hafiz and Shafiq was saying that as well in terms of uh, uh, with a certain industry, there may be a specific like department specialized for chemical engineers, process engineers, safety engineers, like the core engineers. But uh, I think in the uh, real working environment, um, what's built on is that the experience you gain from working actually uh, uh, help, helps you in terms of uh, uh, go into develop into a career so what i'm trying to say that the training they receive from a certain engineering degree um even though it does influence how you think how you approach a certain problem but it doesn't define your career scope uh, and that's, i just want to 
put it up there. So um, I think I mentioned earlier in terms of how my current department work. Um, but if we take a very like core process, let's say like a, a, a medicinal product department. So mm -hmm. you have uh, all the different engineers working from end to end, from, uh, mm -hmm. from the start to the finish. So like you've talked about the medicinal department right at the, 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 the start where you have a uh, process or chemical engineer looking at the chemistry site the uh, active ingredient kind of synthesis and then you're looking into product development where you need to work closely with uh, safety engineers um, chemical engineers and then go on to a uh, product part of the packaging development then we have a uh, packaging engineers that's specifically looking at the the material size so it is it, it, the list go on obviously like uh, as you develop through your career um, um, manufacturing a product you work with it across different field of uh, engineers but I just want to highlight that in terms of uh, your engineering degree could help with landing your first job but the skill set you have gained from the degree um, I think especially for I can speak from chemical engineers I think the key that we uh, uh, spoken earlier about the problem solving skills the how we do risk analysis hypothesis ability to distill the complex messages all these are quite key so it's not only working in engineering field but uh, things like and uh, now we're working in the commercial side i uh, do risk analysis so how we uh, we trying to think one step ahead um trying to expect what's the outcome and trying to take the smart risk so all these uh, the way of thinking from our engineering degree is actually help us in in our daily job thanks Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Ji. Uh, so uh, not only you have to have good uh, technical skills, good in your knowledge, technically, but also you have to have, uh, I think, good communication skills, right? Because you have to work with others uh, with different discipline and background. Especially if you are working with a, a real scientist, sometimes they are more uh, difficult to approach, right? So I uh, we understand that. So uh, being a good engineer, not only you have to uh, have a good technical uh, skill, but also a good uh, uh, other soft skills uh, are needed. Yeah. So thank you very much, Dr. G. So the next question is for our Mr. Hafiz. Uh, so Mr. Hafiz, this is more like a you know uh, Miss Universe type of question. Yeah. So how do you think an engineer of a country can contribute to the development of a country and the nation? Okay, thank you, Dr. Mimi. Thank you for the question. So this is quite a high-level question. So um, I try to answer this question from my point of view. Lah. Okay. So um, how do engineers of a country can actually contribute to the development of the country as well as the nation and also society? society yeah? So um, again, we have been repeating uh, this about engineering. I perceive engineers are the problem solvers lah, with great minds and also strategies. So basically, engineers play very important roles in development of the country and also the nation and society. So in order for the country or the society to progress forward and the nation uh, to have a better quality of life, we in constant need to have a group of engineers from various disciplines to make this happen, with chemical engineering, electrical, uh, civil and also mechanical engineering. Okay, so. Just look at the development around us, the huge buildings, transportation facilities, access to good utilities, clean water, electricity, manufacturing plants that like converting raw materials to valuable goods and also products. These are all built and also maintained by a group of engineers. So in other words, engineers help civilization and also business as well as economy to grow. So. Apart from that, we also need a group of engineers to ensure sustainable development can be achieved. Uh, in the Petron, in Petronas, the company that I work with, we have our statement of purpose. Um, the statement of purpose is basically defining why we exist in the company. Our statement of purpose is a progressive energy and solutions partner and reaching lives for a sustainable future. So from this um, statement of purpose, Basically, engineers play very important roles here to ensure country to progress, innovation can be achieved, and to create a better place to live in for future generations. We are not going to 
uh, focusing on sustaining the life of uh, today's generation, but also we have to think ahead about create a better living for uh, our future generations. So thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Mimi. Thank you very much, yeah, Mr. Hafiz. Uh, so uh, a good sharing, even though he said he, he, he's trying to answer that from his point of view, but I think he covers uh, most of what, what, what we should know on how engineers can play their role in helping the country to be a better uh, country, especially towards uh, going into the developed country. Yeah, so um, our before we go for the, because we received several questions from the audiences, but before we uh, address uh, the questions, let's, let us uh, pose uh, a little bit more question to our panel. So, uh, Mr. Shafiq, eh, Dr. Shafiq, sorry lah, Shafiq, asyik Mr. <laughs> dia kan. Penat kan bagi ni, Dr. Shafiq. How important is it for an engineer to have mm -hmm. a good communication skill? I think this is a bit uh, repeated to what uh, we have been uh, discussing so far with Dr. G. But mm -hmm. maybe from your point of view, when, when we are talking about communication skill, for an engineer, is it all about talking, making presentation, or it goes well beyond that? You know, writing and so on. Can you give us, you know, some thoughts about it? I mean, Dr. Shafiq. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mimi, for the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in any field, in any field you are working, communication is key. Okay. Even you're talking to your friends, also communication. Okay. Even you are silent, it is a communication. Even we are talking, I'm talking alone right now, but <laughs> there is uh, some other people on the other line. So it is a communication. So a communication comes in several different ways. Okay? So, but if we are going to scope down this particular things, discussion to engineering, I think it goes beyond than just talking. Okay, it goes beyond than that. Uh, right now we are talking about uh, whether it is a verbal, the conventional one is whether it is a verbal or is it non-verbal. But right now we have a visualization. Okay, on simulations and everything, we have currently what engineering we have CFD to simulate the temperature gauge, uh, temperature range, and in, in one particular area. So that is one of the area that uh, need to be uh, uh, ventured by the students and also anybody they are pursuing right now because on visualization is another area that can give a better representation compared to just talking. Uh, that's one one of the things. A second of the things, a second part is on report writing and communications and preparing presentations. That is um, what uh, we are used to right now. But how we make that particular presentation is explanatory without us talking to the audience. That is another skill that we need to have. Whether the slides and the com and the communication material is actually uh, self-explanatory without to have any additional information being passed down by the person that actually wish to convey the particular message. So that's the two things that needs to be ventured more by the student uh, currently and the next trend. Okay, over to you, Amy. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Shafiq. Yeah? So, mm -hmm. uh, okay, one last question before we break. Uh, uh, we, we, we have a small break to take up the question from the audience. Uh, G, Dr. G. So, uh, why is it important for an engineer to be aware or cautious of the issue of sustainability? Because before that, when you are talking about engineering, it's all about, you know, making this, making that, developing this, constructing that. But now it's all about sustainability. Especially with your work uh, experience working with the GSK, I think they are really take a, a, a great care on sustainability, right? So can you share with, with us how you contribute towards sustainability uh, issue? Yeah, I think this is a very important topic for all of us. So it's a very obvious that we only have one planet. <laughs> uh, so it's each our responsibility to protect and restore the planet's health. So uh, I think uh, it's quite evident as scientists, there's a sci scientific evidence and study so far to say that uh, we have to act now. So um, <clears throat> I think from, from GSK perspective, we just announced like two very ambitious uh, goal um, just this month in terms of uh, to be net zero, uh, in terms of our impact on climate and net positive for impacts uh, in the nature by 2030. So within the next decade, um, I think most of the company now is trying to drive towards that goal as well, because uh, who would be the um, the best person for uh, uh, especially for for engineers? So I believe the engineers have a very central and crucial role 
Um, because like all of us, we build infrastructure, we design technology, we design processes, we formulate and manufacture intermediate product and end product. So I think it's very important for us to not only aware of the sustainability issues, but we have to use our influence and our skill set to act. So trying to drive down the carbon emissions. So that, of course, there's many different way to do. Um, whether is to, I think that the key one for us is to switch our thinking, um, especially when we come to um, looking at processes. For example, in my field, we even like simple things like making changes to the packaging materials, making more recyclable, um, and looking at uh, if you look at the chemistry synthesis, looking at more green chemistry synthesis. So all these initiatives, it has to be uh, pushed forward more than ever. Um, and um, yeah, I think um, as um, engineers are really integral in making all these changes. So we have the power to do something here. And, and of course, especially for those like uh, the, the young engineers just start the first year degree. So this is the the engineers that are going to make a difference in our future um, and hence it's very crucial so I think the first thing to do is to educate yourself on su sustainability so understanding what exactly is the net zero impact what is uh, in terms of uh, climate impact the nature impact so to, to educate yourself on this topic and then um, the, the last thing is just keep talking about the topic it helps to have the the, the conscious and then to to raise the the awareness as well yeah thank you right good okay thank you very much Yi. yeah so that's why uh, in this class uh if we can brief you a bit on uh in our introduction to engineering uh course we really uh and uh, uh design a very good realistic and proper uh, problem uh, related to sustainability and every year we had uh, we design a, a, a sustainability uh, related uh, uh, case study for the students to solve so that they can start you know understand and appreciate what sustainability is all about uh, when uh, they uh, before they even uh, working as an engineer yeah so now uh, it's already around uh, almost 315 let us take some questions from the our great audiences today so okay okay the first question is uh from uh, blue sky uh -huh. okay so uh this is wow yeah he remember my brother maybe the adore yeah, dr g yeah so this is for dr ku uh dr ku do you face any sexism yeah maybe other uh discrimination maybe in gender code yeah? uh, that, that's what uh, he, he or she meant by that as a woman in your workplace uh, if you do, how do you deal or handle, deal with it or how do you handle it? Okay. Yeah, thanks for the questions. I know like women is underrepresented in the engineering field. So there's less women engineers uh, than male engineers. Um, and obviously I, I try not to use the sexism uh, word. Normally I use as an unbiased conscious. So people will have the, the conscious in terms of when they're making assumptions or things like that um, to base on your your gender. It could be based on your gender or it could be based on your 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 culture as well. Um, I think one of the key things, like especially working overseas, we do have uh, we we the employees were were protected in that sense where you have a, a channel where you can address your concern. I think that the key thing is to speak up. So to speak up and have that honest conversations either with your uh, peers someone that you trust your mentor your manager so to have that uh, a trusted speaker uh, speak up chat channel is quite key um i think with the uh, the current situations um in most of the working environment we do have that support and channel for you to speak up so don't suffer in silence um speak up if you uh, feel like you're being uh, challenged in 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 any way or, or you're not comfortable with a, a certain comment or, or or actions yeah thank you 
So good news to all women engineers or to be out there. Yeah, our students don't be scared. We are women power. And if you feel like not comfortable with anything, you just can speak up. And because we are like in a in a in a in a very uh, peaceful country, a uh, peaceful uh, world now that we don't have to suppress uh, anything that we are not feeling comfortable with. So our next question is by Luis is. Is Suarez, uh, maybe from overseas, I don't know, okay, or maybe just a nickname. So, uh, how, how is it different? Uh, how is it different engineering in Malaysia compared to London? Uh, London cannot lah, Mr. Hafiz Dr. Shafiq must be Dr. Ku also. <laughs> uh, uh, how would Dr. Ku rate the difficulty of being an engineer uh, from Malaysia because you graduate from Malaysia, right, GE? Uh, uh to be an engineer uh, in london and what how you how you can advise these students if they would like to one day work in overseas as well i think we'll probably got a challenge from uh uh hafiz or shafiq here in terms of uh, i think the chemical engineer program in malaysia they're accredited so in terms of uh, having that uh, engineering degree from malaysia you can pretty much work almost anywhere um, because you're qualified to do so and uh, the syllabus that we develop in our university is actually uh, on par with the international level so uh, that, that that's that that's the true fact um, but obviously that's a I don't think apply to London so if you like explore going out to anywhere um, outside of Malaysia it's not around qualifications I think it's around um how you adapt to it so i think uh, this is probably the advice for the first year students and those like about to graduate as well in terms of always be curious never stop learning um if you never stop learning you pick up what is the uh, you be uh, you have you the passions to pursue the knowledge and you're looking at what's other country how they work and then uh, trying to uh, harness that um and trying to build build your strength. So if you uh, if you have a curiosity mind and never stop learning, that that's a very good trait um, to for for any recruiters and um, to look into because experience is one thing, but it's actually your your nature, the the positivity, the wanting to learn kind of attitude. Actually, that uh, it, it makes you a, a very um, how to say. Uh, attractive uh, candidate for the company. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether the panel want to add a bit to my questions like in terms of, uh, I, I don't think that's a, a, any physical barrier or any qualification barrier for uh, Malaysia graduates to work in overseas. But um, I think we just need to take up another step of challenge, like trying to challenge yourself, trying to be ready to adapt to a different environment. Okay, this is what we want to hear, you know, so so that the local graduates that they feel intimidated, whatever, okay, you are just as good as the others, only that you need to sharpen more, maybe perhaps your soft skills and so on, so that you can adapt well with the others, right? Thank yeah. you very much, Dr. Gigi. So uh, now the third question. So before that, uh, we would like to share with you that we have almost uh, 460 uh, online viewers uh, right now, uh, thanks to all the great panels. Kan? And it's very uh, uh, nama, exciting for us to uh, see that there are now uh, a lot of um, interest uh, in the engineering profession. Eh? So and this kind of forum uh, definitely helps uh, more eh, in in uh, instilling uh, interest and minat lah di kalangan our graduates to become a better or great engineers when they are graduating. So our next uh, question is uh, by Fatin yeah from section three. So Fatin no Shara Sharahid uh, would like to ask. Uh, I want to ask one of the panels how students from pure chemical engineering because they are off uh, from pure chemical engineering uh, program now wants to work in oil and gas company maybe like petronas yeah, like mr hafiz or shell and so on so is it only for oil and gas students maybe petroleum engineering uh, that uh, who can work in such company or how dr hafiz see this because you are already been in the in, in this industry for so long okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Bibi. So, uh, 
by default, I have to take this question because this is actually related to oil and gas. Um, by the way, I'm not slow to have this. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, talking about uh, pure campaign engineering, whether uh, is there any opportunity for you to join oil and gas company? Yes, definitely. Take for example, I graduated in pure chemical engineering course. I'm not actually specialized. I was not specialized in petroleum engineering or oil and gas engineering per se. I was a pure chemical engineering back then, back in 2006. I graduated back in 2006. So uh, basically, as long as you have the qualification, the academic qualification, you graduated, okay, hopefully you get the uh, good marks, okay. Um, and then uh, you can actually apply for oil and gas uh, company, be it Shell, be it Petronas, be it uh, ExxonMobil and so on. Um, not only in engineering, okay, not only in chemical engineering, if you are graduated in uh, mechanical, civil, even electrical, so there are still opportunities for you to be part of oil and gas uh, company, okay, as long as you are, um, you are qualified academically, and then not only academic qualification that is important, but also leadership skills, okay? If you have uh, good leadership skills, and then uh, you pass all the necessary qualification and you go for interview and whatnot, and depends on the um, job opportunities at that point of time. So if you're qualified, then yeah, inshallah, you will get uh, the job, okay? But whatever it is, try as much as possible to excel in your studies, okay, as well as um, try to harness your leadership skills even at university level so that you can be a well-rounded person so that when you go for interview, uh, you can actually be uh, um, someone that is different from other candidates, okay. So in terms of opportunity, yes, the opportunity is open all the time, okay. Thank you for the question, Fatin. Uh, over to you, Dr. Mimi. Okay, thank you very much, yeah, Mr. Hafiz. So it doesn't matter. It's not that you have to a master in a petroleum engineering to work in oil and gas uh, company. Yeah, it can also, of course, chemical engineering is very, very re relevant. Only that some students in the class they always we have, we got this like in many semesters they always thought being an engineer is always. Naik helikopter, it's not always like that, kan? Itu, uh, selected uh, cases only, kan? so you know, yeah. better we prepare ourselves for something more realistic, right? Sharpen our writing skills, our thinking skills, and so on. So, our next question, um, okay, our next question is for Dr. Shafiq. Um, okay, good. Uh, Thank you, Blue Sky, for one more question. You are very active, we really appreciate this. So, uh, Dr. Shafiq. Ah, ini memang kena dengan you ni. As former Aduh. graduate, okay, as former graduate from UTM from a pure chemical engineering uh, program, do you have any advice or advices you would like to give to your junior? Now, what day this student should look out for, and what regret? Uh, that okay, something that you regret you didn't do when you were student in UTM. Besides, not <laughs> dating lah, a real one, you know, what, what you regret that you didn't do when you were student in UTM? Okay. Okay, thank you, Timi Mi. Uh, this macam throwback question eh. Uh, throwback <laughs> question to the to the good old days and good young days in UTM. Okay, um, so any advice? I think it's actually planted. The question uh, is actually there for me to answer, tapi it comes uh, early in the in this particular part, but I try to answer as well as I can. As I can, as I can uh. Okay, um, if you can see, eh, um, uh, as a former graduate of UTM, UTM actually have a lot of opportunities. The platform is very big for you to explore so many things, either be it in technical or within technical fields. Okay. You have uh, clubs in chemical engineering, I, I believe there are several uh, academic clubs, even in non-academic uh, discipline, you have clubs um, under HPN. there's so many things that you can do. But in if we're talking strictly on engineering things, I think uh, I don't have any regrets uh, in academics because I think uh, I did my uh, studies uh, not that not say that well I can do more but uh, because I tend to see the balance in things okay I tend to see the balance in things I see that academics is there but there's also other skills that I have to pick up during my university years 
I uh, did my uh, degree for four years. That's the only all the time that I have in the universities. So I pick up some other things in clubs, in uh, even though in college, ke, JKM, ke, MPP. Ke. So I did all the things because I think I know that uh, technical uh, competence is the things that they see. But when you are graduating uh, with maybe about 2,000 graduates of chemical engineers, how do you separate yourself from the other person? So this is where the elements comes in, where your leadership skills, where your communication skills, uh, problem solving. Uh, don't think that uh, problem solving only comes in technical. Non-technical also comes in, where you have to do for human management, you have to do for uh, scheduling. So all of that and prioritization, everything that comes with an essence of a human, you have to pick up in the universities. So in universities, if I reflect back, I did join several clubs, university, uh, inside academic and outside academic fields. I did a lot of things uh, in programs, even though it is uh, non-academic, but I still be proud of what I do. So be adventurous, uh, be adventurous. Don't just uh, play down uh, to academics, be more adventurous so that you can pick up a lot, a lot of friends uh, when you are there in universities. It means that when you graduated, you have a lot of friends and then that, will, that friends will go out to another industry, then the collaboration comes in. Uh, so that is how you try to plan out your uh, future. It's also, it also actually starts in university. Okay. Thank you, Tammy. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Shaki. Yeah. So <laughs> whatever he has shared with us just now, students take note. Don't repeat the same thing so that you won't have things to look back <laughs> after you leave UTM, right? So thank you, Dr. Shaki, yeah, for this uh, memorable throwback. Gitu, yeah. Okay. So. Um, our next uh, and last question for this uh, first cycle of question and, and answer punya uh, session from the audience uh, is uh, by Umu Atira, also from Section 3. Yeah? So Umu, Umu uh, is asking a very relevant question now. Um, will this global pandemic yeah, uh, because of this COVID-19 affect the future working staff for engineers, how they work, you know, and uh, how the engineers, uh, uh, what they should do to cope with the changes. Now, because I, I understand in Petronas, you have been working from home since March, right? Until now uh, in Petronas, right? So how about maybe in the UK and so on? Maybe we have Dr. Gigi to answer this question? Yeah, probably we'll start first and then I'll pass the button okay. to you. Uh, uh, Okay. Yeah, the other two uh, pa panel. So uh, I think um, it's, it's it's something that um, it shows that there are things that are out of our control with the uh, pandemics uh, happening now. Um, and then things like uh, when people keep on talking about the new normal in terms of like working from home using more of the virtual platform. Um, I think that's something that we might resettle back to the old way of working, but at the same time, we have to change uh, some part of the the way of w working as well. So one other thing, I guess, uh, will be more re relevant to the students here in terms of um, it allow people if it allow people to work in from home in terms of it allows other companies to tap into the global talent. So in terms of um, we don't have a physical office. So when we talk about certain skill, we can uh, tap into having the best talent on Asia Pac to join our company because we can all work as commercially as well. So that, that that's really good news in terms of all the engineering students, like uh, where people can can tap into the global talent pool. Um, and I think another part is that we talked about before is digitalization. Um, I think um, pharma industry is in somewhat in some parts uh, a bit behind compared to other industry, but uh, this pandemic actually pushed most of the industry trying to digitalize everything almostly uh, instantly overnight because of the the whole situation for forces to become. Um, so in the future, is everything around digitalization? How we um, analyze the data? How we look at the data? How we uh, solve? problem through the virtual platform as well. So so that's probably the two things that I can think of. Um, I hand it over to to you too. Yeah. Maybe any of you uh, would like to add anything on that or that's okay. I mean okay if I may add a yeah. few points. 
Yeah. So even in Petronas, we have been wow. talking about uh, digitalization even before COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. So in a way, COVID-19 pandemic somehow accelerate the mm. movement towards uh, digitalization. Okay. All this work, we thought we cannot achieve uh, uh, certain work deliverables through uh, uh, digitalization efforts. So for example, we need to have a physical meeting, we need to have a face-to-face -face meeting to discuss on certain things. But somehow it's proven during COVID-19 pandemic, it is actually can happen. Um, I mean, uh, myself and also my team uh, did risk assessment. We did uh, develop procedures, we review procedures, and then we also conduct technical assessment through um, through all these uh, uh, MS teams, uh, with uh, Skype thing and so on. So it's actually doable. It's proven doable, and it actually. Um, um, you can actually, we thought that if you are having a meeting online, you cannot achieve certain deliverables, but it's actually, it's workable. It's workable and even sometimes it can be more productive because you can have more meetings, more discussions. Uh, sometimes you, it's actually a bit more tiring when working uh, online, yeah, That's because tough. you tend to work extra, extra hours. Mm. But the uh, Obviously, of course, with the global pandemic affect the future working style definitely because it's proven now we are not necessarily go to the office and do work. We can actually uh, work uh, at home and still achieve our targets. But there are certain uh, works, say for example, like if you are required to run a plan, you have to troubleshoot uh, problems at time. Then of course, you have to attend physically uh, and solve the problems. That's, uh, uh, that is unavoidable. But of course, if you need to go to the workplace, be it plan or place, you need to follow the right SOP lah. Okay, wear masks and then physical distancing and whatnot. So, yeah, that's uh, from me. Thank you. Okay, Can I just a add uh, uh, one more thing? I guess it's uh, when we go into the future change, it, it, one, one thing that's very important is the mental agility. Because as uh, we're saying that we work from home, there's no break between like the work-life balance. So the mental agility, like uh, how you train your mind to be more agile and trying to adapt to different changes. So that that's very key, kind of, uh, because you need to have a good mental health to deliver a high per, uh, performance role. So uh, these are quite key in terms of, uh, especially dry driving within the GSK and looking at the mental health of all the workers as well. So it's quite key um, going forward. Correct. Correct. So thank you very much for that, uh, both of you, uh, in answering the this uh, pandemic-related question. So uh, let us continue with the second phase uh, of the forum session, huh? uh, which uh, we will post you with the questions from us that, that, that we have prepared rather than the, uh, the question from the audiences. So uh, in uh, for this second uh, cycle, uh, let me throw uh, the first question to um i think to mr hafiz okay uh so before we took a break just now uh in taking the question from the audience we asked uh dr shafiq about communication skill but uh what are the other soft skills besides communication skills that need to be acquired or polished uh within the students uh during their undergraduate study in order to prepare them to be a good uh successful uh, engineer when they are working okay thank, uh, thank you dr mimi yes uh, definitely communication communication skill is very crucial um skill that uh, every engineer needs to have like, need to polish and whatnot but apart from that other soft skills would be uh, from my point of view number one is about uh, leadership skills as well as good teamwork so um, leadership is about taking responsibility not only to yourself but also to the people in your team okay so a good leader is not merely to get the job done but also a good leader needs to guide inspire others to innovate things outside the box uh, things outside the box as well as strive for excellence so in engineering in fact in any profession you can never work in silo so a good teamwork. Teamwork is usually is a non-negotiable soft skills at work. You need to be able to excel not only as individual, as a person, but also you need to excel as a team. 
as a team to achieve team and also company goals lah. Okay. The second soft skill, I think it's actually been covered uh, by Dr. G before. It's about uh, agility. Okay. So what does it mean by agile? Agile is actually quickly adapt to changes. Okay. So with rapidly advancing technology and also industrial revolutions that focuses more on uh, digitalization. So constant changes in business and also operation lands uh, landscape. Agility or adaptability is an essential skill that need to be improved and polished. Okay. So in fact, being willing and able to quickly adapt to situations in a highly, uh, is a skill highly valued by most of the employees nowadays lah. Okay. And then the third skills uh, from my point of view that is very important also is about interpersonal skills. Okay. So interpersonal skill is actually a broad uh, kind of skill, but it's actually about having and maintaining good relationship with others that include being active listeners, being able to handle feedback and active positively from feedback. Although it may not be possible to have a great relationship uh, with all people in all situations, but still developing your interpersonal skills will help you, those around you and the company you work for. Okay. And you also need to be courageous, but yet humble to voice out opinion and ideas. Okay. Sometimes from ideas, it can actually turn into innovation that is valuable for the company. Okay. So being a typical nation, sometimes we are a bit reserved, but in the real work later, you have to be, uh, uh, able to voice out your opinion because every opinion matters. Okay, so leadership skills, good teamwork, agility, interpersonal skills are among the key soft skills that require to be the future ready engineers from my point of view. Uh, thank you. Over to you, Dr. Mimi. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hafiz. Uh, we are actually very happy and glad to get those feedback from Mr. Hafiz because you know what? Uh, that's what our introduction to engineering course is all about. The course was designed in a way that the students need to work in team from day one of the course. So some of them, of course, they are not feeling very comfortable in the beginning because they used to work alone when, uh, when you know, uh, in school and matriculation uh, institute. But now they are somehow forced to work in, in, in a team. Uh, but now listening this directly from you, they should realize lah, kan? this is what the industry needs, right? Uh, um, not anymore um, excel uh, alone, but you have to be able to mingle and apa nama, respect the others lah, because you have, you also, you always have to work with others when you are working in the real world. So thank you, Nikafis. And the next question is uh, for Dr. Shafiq. Okay, Dr. Shafi, just now, also before our break, uh, we asked uh, Dr. G about sustainability. So a little bit more on that. How sustainability matter um, or aspect should always be calculated or included in every decision uh, made by the engineers? Uh, thank you, Dr. Mimi. I believe this question actually being related to the industries and also if you are in research and development areas. So this is very, very critical point to be addressed. So sustainability, just to echo what Dr. Uh, what Dr. G says that we only have one earth, so we cannot go anywhere. So in this, on that manner, we have to ensure that our sustainability to be, to live in this world is there. But we have to look into several aspects as well. We have looked into the uh, our uh, environment sustainability. We have to look into also our um, financial sustainability of the company. So how do we balance between those two areas? If we are working with companies and as well as we want to preserve the world that we are looking at. Because if you look at the current uh, goals set by the United Nations, which is the Sustainable Development Goals, you have 17 goals to be achieved for us to be uh, to be sustainable in the world that we are living currently so most of the things that to be addressed are macam water poverty aquatic life forestry energy so every decision making that we made in in as an engineer need to be addressing if not all maybe just one or two things that very specific and very close to us let's say you are in the uh, oil and gas industry let's say we're talking about petronas and everything so every decision making that you made on the emission need to be addressing to the 
uh, regulations set by the company, uh, country or even to the Paris Agreement that if if we are looking into reducing the carbon footprint in the world. In the world. So that uh, then that uh, decision comes with a, a, another effort such as the R&D part to capture the carbon, to capture the methanes and that will lead into a maybe a development of a new materials, maybe from not from uh, uh, sources that is very harmful to the world, maybe from uh, biomass material that can be actually being reused on the recycled part and also the items that being can that normally be treated as a waste and convert to a very convertible materials that actually can use, uh, that can serve the purpose of uh, that sustainability. So. Um, new materials are being developed in each and every day. You have uh, functionalized material, you have magnetized material uh, that can be addre addressing some of the world's problems such as uh, oil spill remediation, carbon captures. So these are the things that actually plays a role as a researcher and also as an engineer to sort through this particular uh, innovation and try to implement this into the uh, industry. But uh, maybe due to some lacking that we are most of our research are currently in fundamental stage we have to take it up to another level that can be used industry on physical uh, on the technology feasibility and also economic feasibility so each and every step of our uh, venture that we are taking we have to look into the sustainability part which is one of the ethics of being a good engineer back to you dr mimi Thank you very much, Dr. Shafiq. Yeah, a very practical and real life examples uh, you shared with us just now. Thank you very much for that. And even in the academic line, right? I mean, I think you all agree that nowadays in making any new research proposal and uh, whatsoever, whatsoever, we have to include always sustainability aspect in our work plan, right? So this shows how important sustainability matters now. So the next question is for Dr. Ku, Dr. Ji. Uh, how important it is to become a registered or certified or chartered or perhaps what you call here in Malaysia a professional engineer when working overseas. In Malaysia, we have IEM, we have BEM. What about in the UK? I mean, is it important to have such professional certification in order to work as an engineer over there? So, so thanks for the question. So I, I just want to put it out there. I myself is not a chartered engineer. So uh, in terms of, uh, I think um, obviously it's key depending on where you work and what you want to get out from it. So I think in order, if you want to pursue that line, you need to know why you want to become a chartered engineer rather than um, because everyone is getting chartered engineer. That's why I'm trying to be a chartered engineer too. So, so that's not a good reason to be a chartered engineer. Um, so uh, when I um, pick up, obviously, because I don't have personal experience, but I've spoken to a few people that uh, become a chartered engineer here in the UK as well. Um, the, uh, chartered engineer here, uh, CENG, uh, that, that's the title, is uh, protected by the civil law in the UK. So it's the engineering council that uh, regulate and give up the title, like in terms of the, um, the chartered ship. And the whole process will take about four to five years, um, the journey. Um, I think um, it, it demonstrates like uh, you have your competency independently assessed by a professional body. Um, you have your credential, and then you also show that you have made a commitment in terms of your career development. So all those like, like three key points in terms of uh, uh, when you get a chartership, what you can demonstrate to your employees. Um, so you have your competency assessed, you have your credential verified, and also you have demonstrated that you have your personal development plan, you have the drive to do your career development. I think, um, and also that when I look across the reason why doing it many different people have many different reasons um i think i just picked a few um i've spoken to where people want to switch career from academic to industry um i think the chartered ship just give a kind of a view of a, a skill of a hands-on engineers what they need to have and then especially that things like talk talk about a lot about as well around the ethic of the engineers so uh, it allows when when you go through the process from an academic um, you allow you to have that view of uh, what what it means to be a hands-on engineer in, in the industry so 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 that's one of the the reasons that uh, people go on the the, the chartered ship uh, journey and then another one is around uh, boost your confidence 
to widen your network. Um, I think as we know that we work in, a, if you work in a company, you interact mostly within the company itself, you have a different functions, but having a professional net network will allow you to interact with uh, engineers from like-minded, like but then different industry as well. So it's a good way to um, to get inspiration from other industry, from, um, uh, from other engineers, and as well as uh, opportunity to have a mentor, to have uh, someone, an, an, an ally to, to lean in, to have someone to, to, to get advice, and at the same time to boost your confidence as well. And then the last one is most of the people enjoy most is actually the journey, you know, like it takes about four to five years to get that uh, chartered ship. And then in order to do that, you have like you have a mentor, you have to justify, you put in your paperwork in terms of uh, uh, and you have to develop your career plan. So all these journey help you to understand yourself better. And at the same time, you gain the skill set. So lots of people actually, the reason why they do the chartered ship is because of the journey, um, especially if you're fresh out from graduates. And that is a, quite a good structure for you to start off for the first four or five years to have that kind of a, a defined career plan. So yeah, back to you. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Angie. So like, I, I have to agree with her, even though, I mean, I got my charter already, but I always have to agree with what she said just now that it depends on what you really want to do, not like following what other people do and you just follow the flow, you know, that, that's not good, right? Because all this needs also commitment, the, the, the fees and, you know, the exams and so on. So focus on what you really want to do with your life and then decide whether you, you have to do it or not. In the UK, it's like that, right? Because it depends on the company that you are working with. But what about in Malaysia? I mean, in Malaysia, how important it is for the local engineers, our soon to be graduated engineers, you know, our students here, uh, to register with the BEM or IEM uh, in order to work as an engineer in Malaysia, Hafiz, because you are graduated from the from, from Australia, right? But you work uh, as an engineer in Malaysia. Maybe you can share with us uh, a little bit on this, uh, Mr. Hafiz. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mimi. Um, actually, I couldn't agree more with Dr. G. It's actually similar. First of all, you need to, uh, to ask yourself why you need the uh, chartered ship. Lah. But in this case, it's about registering with the local uh, organization like BM, also IEM. So it's actually similar. It's actually a platform for you to connect and network with other professionals. Lah. Okay. Uh, with this, it's actually an opportunity to collaborate with people in the same profession. You can leverage from each other's strength and, and also experience to further add values to your profession. So from this collaboration, you can uh, accelerate certain work or even deliver more than expected okay, from collaboration. Um, normally, uh, like you already mentioned, certain engineering company or graduate engineer to perform engineering consulting work requires certain credential, professional engineers, for example. Hence, uh, registering with uh, local organization like BM or IEM also become essential or plus point to certain engineers. Okay, So um, I think it's also important for you to receive the acknowledgement in global engineering consulting work so that it can actually increase your credentials. So in order for you to work more effectively in the future. Apart from that, by registering with uh, association or uh, bodies like IEM and also BM, you can uh, get updated with the new development or technology so that we will not be left behind. So um, in a way, in a nutshell, registering with the renowned bodies okay, like BM, IEM, uh, or even Mihan because uh, yeah. I mentioned of Miha, Malaysian Industrial Hygiene Association. So give you the opportunity for you to network, yes. collaborate, and also grow and progress well in your profession later. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Mimi. Yes, yeah, I could agree more. Yeah. The, um, the, actually, the important or the, the original idea of having all these engineers to register with these bodies is for them to have the opportunity for the, apa, you call it the CPD, right? The, the continuous development. That, that's what it's all about sebenarnya. Because once you register, you are being 
somehow required to 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 collect the points and the points is not something wasted you have to take courses and go for continuous training and uh, this is what actually important uh, for an engineer all engineer to have so that they will always uh, grow uh, with uh, and being updated with latest technology with the training and the workshop they are attending uh, 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 i mean uh, every year so our next question is um for uh, Dr. Shafiq, uh, how to produce uh, or motivate one um, to be a passionate engineer that wants to do the best in whatever he or she does? I think this is a very important question for the student. Uh, some students, they just do it because their parents ask them to do it. And some students, they choose, for example, uh, chemical engineering because they love chemistry subject in the uh, <laughs> During a form five pair, and you know, this night, uh, we we understand that we also used to choose chemical engineering because of that. And uh, but to give them this burning kind uh, passion and uh, excitement to become a real engineer that can really function, how, how we want to motivate the students in becoming one. Okay, uh, thank you, Tamimi. So based on that uh, before that i would just like to add to mr hafiz punya argument on registering to iem and bm so uh, engineering work is a regulated work so it must be registered through bem so every 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 person that wish to conduct in engineering works have to register with board of engineers because it is a regulated body and you have to be registered and you have your own license to practice engineering so if you don't have registered you do are not registered uh, please do register lah, okay uh, so um oh, back to the questions uh how do you how to produce or motivate uh, to be a, a passionate engineer so in the end really it comes to what is your self satisfaction whether you have your own target whether you have your own aspirations so um if you relate back to the university punya uh, context uh, how do we uh, nurture these particular students so that uh, they are self-driven, they are motivated to, to achieve uh, these particular um, uh, goals? So for me, um, you students need to have uh, their own self-satisfaction, in whether it is in, in academics, in non-academic things. So because engineering works, that comes in two things. First in uh, management, second in, is in technical. So technicals is when you learn in your program, in your academics, how to score better grades, how to solve the particular problem given by your lecturers. But um, just to share, um, for those uh, students are graduating for first class or second class upper, again. So some industries actually have their tiering though, have, have their tiering. So uh, for you to be able, able to apply to these particular companies, you need to have a certain grades that as the passing grade before you are being and uh, you are you are being uh, called for an interview even right now uh, the one that screen out your resume is not people it's just in ai so when you pass that particular gate then you will get the uh, call for an interview so i think that is one of the things that you have to look into perform well in academics that's the first thing and then equip yourself don't don't forget to equip yourself with this kind of um, uh, skills, that skill set that actually contributes to the uh, industry like what Mr. Uh, Mr. Hafiz says, leadership, team players and everything. So for you to be able to work in an environment that you like, let's say in Petronas, which is a very uh, nice uh, environment to work with. So for me, um, you need to have that target. You have to set that particular target so that um, you are able to achieve it within the four or five years of your of your studies okay so your aspiration must be there whether you want to have a, you want to get a chartered engineer by the Mimi and the team already have the chartered engineers so that particular title somewhat can give you self-satisfaction of you achieving that particular point so whether you want to have your phds so that is one of the thing that you have to set from now as a student but if you are already in an engineering field whether you can solve a very tough problem that already faced by your company for let's say for one or two months if you are able to solve that particular problem through the input of research through the input of collaboration for other people that can distinguish you from being a normal person a normal engineer to a very passionate engineer that can solve most of the problems being posed by the industry and deliverables to the companies so having a very clear target a very clear true north 
of your career progression or even your studies can assist you in having that. Inshallah. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you very much, Dr. Shafiq. Yeah, very good sharing yeah, and tips for the, for, for our students. So uh, it is very sad for us that we have to say goodbye to Dr. G after this final question. We have prepared for her as she needs to make her way, right, for an important errand related to her work. It's already almost 8 a.m. there uh, in London, G.G. Yeah? So uh, before you leave, please uh, give us a little bit more, uh, you know, sharing with the students. Uh, what are perhaps the additional challenges uh, faced by women engineers? Only you can answer this, uh, of course. And perhaps a little bit of advice uh, for our potential engineers who are listening to this forum session today. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, I think I would just want to echo what uh, Shafiq was saying earlier around the having that purpose is very important because it drives like uh, what you actually work towards so it can be a, if you have a purpose in life so it's a very a abstract i'm sure like when you're first year engineers you're talking about purpose of the life you're like whoa that's so big <laughs> but um, um i think it's always good to explore yourself what is your value uh, what is your expectation um to be your authentic self like what you strive to be it can be as simple as to be kind to other people or to be kind to the environment and things like that so something like a purpose that you can cling on to uh, when you uh, work yourself towards the degree or in, a, in, a, in your career as well so purpose, purpose is very important um, I think um, when we talk about the questions additional challenges faced by women engineers I know like we touch a bit around women's are very under uh, represented in both like academic, maybe a, pro a, a, a professional fields of engineers as well. Um, I believe like probably UK is probably one of the worst one. I think uh, based on the statistic, like in 2019 last year, we only got uh, the women only make up approximately 11% of the engineers in UK. So it's a very small percentage. Um, and we spoke about the uh, unconscious bias. Um, and then I think uh, one of the key, obviously, what we can I try not to, obviously, that's challenges, like, uh, but then what we can uh, improve ourselves, like, I think one of the key one is around perhaps uh, confidence issues. Um, I know, like, we talk about within GSK as well, in terms of, like, uh, we have stats saying that a uh, uh, woman has a tendency not to apply for a job when they haven't ticked all the boxes, but then for male, they are more... Uh, have had more t tendency to apply for a job, even though they, they just tick like a part of the boxes. So um, I think one thing to say that job description is a wish list. So it doesn't mean that you won't find like, normally it doesn't find like perfect candidate that tick all the boxes. Obviously you have the basic requirements. Um, and then the advice here is to push yourself forward. I think, um, uh, um, we need to have more confidence in terms of uh, looking at your strength, focus on your strengths, what you're really good at, build on that. Um, because there's no real downside here because if you apply for a job and then if you fail, um, but in the end you, you understand yourself better. So, and then you can have another plan how to develop yourself to reach that target. So. I think to build up the confidence, it's, it's always a, it's a hard thing to do. I know, especially from an Asian upbringing, you have to speak up and then be strong. Um, it, that's no easy way around it. So you just have to work on your confidence um, to, to put yourself out there and take take the risk. So uh, that, that that's one of uh, the things like in terms of how we can uh, overcome some of the challenges we, uh, in, 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 in engineering. Um, for advice, I have uh, three kind of keywords. Um, I think it resonates throughout the whole forum as well. Uh, one is be curious, never stop learning. Um, I think it's quite key to get that breadth of experience. So you can have a very specialized skill. You can be uh, specialized in the uh, uh, process safety, you got environmental uh, uh, research and things like that. But then it is quite key for us to understand what other 
industry and how the interlink between the field as well. So uh, never stop learning, trying to get a breath of the experience. And then secondly is stretch yourself. So we are fortunate in our company recently, we have uh, the uh, Dr. Condoleez Rice, so it's the former US Secretary of State. So she came to uh, like a uh, part of the GSK to give a career talk. And then she sort of like, to do the hard things and then you have that energy come from stretching yourself so if you stretch yourself do the hard thing if you su succeed it's actually energize you to to motivate you to do more so one of the advice like um, i've had part of my career is every year we talk about development plan and i always have one aspect that trying to stretch myself so stretch put yourself out of the com comfort like box and then trying to uh, work on uh, certain things that, uh, that that you're not familiar with. So you always have one, trying to put one objective for, for yourself for every year or in a degree and trying to learn one aspect. So, so that's very important, stretch yourself. And then the third thing is networking. So surround yourself with people that can help you. Um, another thing that I've learned throughout my career is to have a mentor. To have someone that you can uh, bounce off the ideas, to have uh, someone can give you advice, so that that's a very good platform. So three things: be curious, stretch yourself, and networking. Yeah. That's um, with that. Uh, I think I have to go now. Uh, apologize for that, um, but it's really nice to speak to you all, and thanks for all the questions as well. Thank you very much, Gigi, from the bottom of our heart. We really appreciate you being here with us today. And we wish you a very pleasure and enjoyable day ahead. All Take right. care. Thank Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. So we have uh, to uh, give a uh, uh, bit of farewell to Gigi now. And we will continue a little bit more. Three questions left. But this question cannot cannot not be asked because these are the three Normally, we save the best for last, right? So these three <laughs> questions are the questions that we have to ask. And I think some of the parents also are interested to know uh, about this because these are somehow related to rewards, you know. It's all about some somehow, you know, we cannot avoid that we work, we love to be uh, rewarded, right? But uh, so uh, this question goes to uh, Mr. Hafiz. So personally, Mr. Hafiz, uh, after being working for so long, what is the biggest reward so far you have ever been awarded with or experienced with, achieved after becoming an engineer? So maybe this can a bit, you know, motivate uh, or inspire the students. For example, in terms of job accomplishment or satisfaction that you were sharing it with us. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mimi. So um, it's quite a challenging question because talking about my uh, personal experience, yeah. Um, actually, there are many achievements, many rewarding experience throughout my 13 plus plus working experience. I cannot really specify them one by one, but uh, I would say that the fact that I'm working with Petronas, I'm actually very proud and forever grateful to be part of a great organization like Petronas, a Fortune Global 500 player. So the company actually has invested a lot on people development, not only on technical areas, but also building leadership skills. So I may not be the person that I am today, if not because of the opportunities that are given by Petronas, which I found very rewarding. So um, plus the fact that the company that I work with has contributed a lot to the country, as well as to the nation as a whole, so being part of Petronas is like providing a national services uh, to me. Lah. So I found it very rewarding. And so for every Petronas achievement, be it contribution to the government, to the nation, uh, successfully built Pengarang Integrated Complex, floating LNGs, made outstanding discoveries locally as well as internationally. So it feels like I'm actually part of the great achievement. Lah. Because in Petronas, we believe that each one of us is actually like a dot. So everyone is actually connected. So we have to celebrate uh, It's part of a shared success for every achievement that Petronas has made so far. So um, the fact that now I'm actually in HSC line, 
health, safety and also environment line and protecting workers' safety and health is actually our ultimate aim. The task itself is actually a noble job and very rewarding by ensuring everyone goes home safely. Okay, so even in my profession as industrial hygienist, I have the opportunity to travel many places, not only in Malaysia, Peninsula, Sabah and Sarawak, but also other countries, countries that no one actually wants to go. Countries like Iraq, Turkmenistan, Myanmar, uh, Indonesia, South Africa and so forth to perform industrial hygiene consultancy services and meet people from different races, cultures, uh, by bringing values and also provide solutions for the protection of workers' health and safety. Uh, in the biggest reward that I found, uh, that I have ever experienced so far. So it's about job satisfaction, not only about uh, earnings, but also job satisfaction that I uh, gained from working with partners. I found it a very rewarding experience so far. Thank you very much, Dr. Mimi. Over to you. Yeah, that's very inspiring. Ken. After At the end of the day, it's not all about money. We have to admit money is important, but what we want to contribute, uh, you know, especially to the Ummah, kan, to the nation. That's what more important can we uh, we uh, exist as a human being to 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 give more rather than to receive, right? So, uh, last question for Mister eh, Doctor Shafi, and then we have another one uh, for Mister Hafiz before we go to the questions by audiences. Maybe a short one, uh, Doctor Shafi. Yeah. So mm -hmm. before we end uh, the session, uh, I mean, what are the challenges? Uh, awaited for the engineering students in the future because you are also working in the academic line. Uh, maybe you can a bit share on this. The challenges awaited the engineering students, especially in the future. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Mimi. So, um, most of us are looking into the future. What does the future lies for the students and for the parents are looking in this particular streams, are uh, looking how does is engineering still relevant? So my my opinion, eh, my opinion on this is we are engineering fields are still relevant. Okay, engineering is still is still going to be here for a long long time because uh, we are going towards a technology driven industry. So based on that, what awaits our engineering students? Again, those are in first year are taking introduction to engineering courses. And so first and foremost, I think need to be ready for a new term. Okay, I, I come across this term just one one or two months ago. We call it VUCA, V U C A. Okay, uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Okay, so uh, nobody knows that we are going to try in our home for two weeks or two months or three months and suddenly the pandemic happens. So that is where the uncertainty. So we need to be there, we need to be very careful on uh, how are we going to proceed further. So it, for students, you are still students, so grab everything that you can. You, you have uh, quite some time at home, you can take some courses, free free courses uh, in uh, available in the online, in Coursera, that you can uh, take uh, these particular courses so that you can upskill your personal uh, skill sets. So um, things like uh, basic coding on using Python. So this is where the data driven lies. You have to develop a web based uh, things, but related to engineering, not just uh, games and everything that which are picking up right now. But how do we uh, go to the visualization of, uh, of the industry? If you uh, can simulate the whole plan simulation in one go. So how does it go about? how we can predict the data that based on the historical data the trend will be there so um it will happen uh, some some of the symptoms already there before the actual incident happened so uh, that's how the challenges is for the future the era of digital digitalization it was as what mr Harvey says uh these particular things speed up uh, the initiative of digitalization of all the industries so the things that we didn't think is is, is uh, physically uh, feasible right now it's actually happening each, uh, every single day we are having a forum uh, miles apart yeah we are having classes uh, miles apart so these particular things are what the student has to be venturing about so how do we be relevant in this particular VUCA state volatility in, in our current economics uh, uncertainty of our future health uh, whether the whether the vaccines is uh, will be produced sooner or later so these are the things that we cannot say whether it, it is um, 
uh, certain at some particular point the vaccine will be released. But on our side, we have to be prepared whether if it is being released, whether it can be used to, or can be uh, relevant to us. Okay. So being on that particular line, we have to be very uh, ready in this, but uh, for the future in these four states, okay? Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Dr. Shafiq. Yeah, the challenges that the, sh mm -hmm. the students should be uh, aware of from now, yeah, in order to prepare themselves to be a very good engineer when they are working one day. So last uh, question, but after that, we also received a lot of interesting questions from the audiences, yeah? a very lively and practical question from the audiences that we cannot wait to address. So before that, before we go to that, uh, Mr. Uh, Hafiz, I think these questions are not only interested uh, to the student but also the parents and us the lecturers because we always uh hear you know uh, to the myth that um you know studying very hard being an engineer and then you only always uh, stay to be uh, uh, a normal or common worker kind okay? not uh, uh, to have the opportunity to be the, the manager the boss can okay? then uh, so we would like you to a bit share on this uh first of all the management the top level management people in big multinational company do these engineers also stand a chance to be one or only they take um purely management people and how is it important or significant for these top management le level people uh especially in uh, you know big multinational company who have knowledge in engineering do they need only pure management knowledge or they also need a technical engineering knowledge in order to become a good uh, plan manager or you know leader of the company okay mr Afis. okay thank you dr mimi thank you for a very interesting question so maybe i i describe a bit in terms of how petronas uh, chart their career path for uh, most of the staff yeah so if you enter once you enter as executive in petronas um junior executive for example then you might be promoted as senior executive and whatnot so you at that juncture you have a choice either you want to climb up at the managerial line or you want to climb up as a technical professional line so i choose the technical professional line so far but i can actually switch to managerial line if i want okay so uh, technical professional line you can promote it as a technical professional staff uh, principal as well as custodian okay but for manager line, then you promote it as a manager, technical manager, senior managers, general managers, CEO and whatnot. Okay, so that is actually the career path that uh, available currently at Petronas. But um, if you chose to be on the manager line, so as you climb up to top management level, basically your technical or engineering uh, knowledge remain important. It's still important because it set a good foundation in order for you to oversee overall business operations and also make a good technical judgment and also decision making okay but apart from that okay technical engineering knowledge very important uh, but also to be in a top management level one must also have a strong leadership skills okay we talk about uh, leadership skill earlier on okay and also good commercial skills okay sometimes uh, um engineers are lacking in terms of uh, commercial skills okay some things that we have to polish it uh, even further lah, okay and also a good a good business acumen the ability to make good judgment and also take quick decision as well as exposure to various department and disciplines lah, be it strategic planning finance and commercial hse safety as well as others okay for you to be a well-rounded techno what we call it as techno commercial leader in the future so uh, just to give you an uh, examples to motivate you even our former president of petronas former president and ceo of petronas tan sri wanzul kifli used to be the graduate of chemical engineer engineering uh, back then a uh, long time ago okay in edinburgh university so actually it is possible for some of the participants now you can actually have the chance to be the future CEO in the future, in the future, uh, inshallah. And maybe one of you might, uh, I might be reporting to you in the future, who knows? Okay. <laughs> so just dream big and stretch yourself so that you can actually uh, succeed in the future. 
Thank you, Dr. Mimi. Thank you very much, Mr. Hafiz. A very good uh, orang kata tips and motivation eh, for the students that why they should be uh, uh, good in their study uh, from now. Macam Dr. Shafiq cakap tadi, we pun kat, rasa macam very relevant. Don't be influenced by the Isna famous kan, that study is not important, whatever, kan? you can be a good businessman ke businessman but with knowledge, right? Uh, so be a, a, an educated businessman, be a, an educated whatever, kan? so that is more important. So excel in your study, that is the key, most important thing that you have to do now. So now let us entertain some questions from the audience. So we have a lot of questions but we only have 15 minutes left. So first question is from Mr. Adam Aminuddin. So uh, this student needs to go to Mr. Hafiz. So Petronas recently announced their commitment towards achieving net zero target by 2050, venturing into renewable energy sectors. So what is the future of chemical engineering graduates to be like if it is to follow along this line of, uh, you know, what, what Petronas uh, targeted? So Mr. Hafiz. Okay, thank you, Adam, for the question. It's a very good question. Yes, you aware if you read the newspaper, even if you look at the news uh, on television, Petronas recently declared aspiration to achieve net zero carbon emission by 2050. So this is actually part of sustainable agenda. What does it mean by sustainable agenda? Because we want to create a good uh, and conducive living for the future generations. So in achieving this, this is actually quite a bold and stretch target for Petronas being the oil and gas company. Okay, So how Petronas can actually uh, realize this aspiration? Number one is about uh, building operational excellence strength. So as a Petronas, as an oil and gas uh, industry, of course we have to uh, further uh, look at how we can actually reduce hydrocarbon flaring and venting, uh, how we can actually mitigate uh, greenhouse gas emission, how we can actually minimize waste and more recycling throughout our value chain. Okay, this has already been covered by Dr. Shafiq Ali Ona. And also we have to strive to make linear energy and uh, to make sure that it is more accessible. Lah. Okay, so we have to find uh, low carbon energy and solutions such as natural gas as well as renewable energy. Petronas now has already ventured to renewable energy, energy say for example, like uh, solar panels and so on, okay? And apart from that, we need to accelerate technology and innovation stewardship, lah, okay? In order to achieve, uh, say for example, like advanced emission reduction technologies, okay? In order for us to realize this uh, aspiration about uh, uh, to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050. So in a nutshell, basically to realize this aspiration, we need a group of engineers, not only chemical engineers, engineers in every discipline, in every core disciplines and other sub-disciplines. So because we need your brains and your strategic thinking and on how we can actually realize this aspiration. So in a way, uh, by having this uh, aspiration, it gives uh, quite a bright uh, future for future chemical engineers, not only chemical engineers, but most of the engineers, okay? Um, more opportunities uh, will come in the future, inshallah. Thank you, Dr. Mimi, over to you. Thank you very much, eh, Mr. Hafiz. So, uh, we, we cannot comment a lot because we don't have time. So, our next question is by, uh, from Nabiha Zukifli. So, Na Nabiha Zukifli uh, uh, is asking this uh, practical question. Uh, can chemical engineer work as mechanical engineer once they graduated? I mean, they 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 they, they learn chemical engineering uh, uh, program uh, when they are student, but once they are graduating, they get offer to become mechanical engineer by a company. Can they hmm. do that, uh, Dr. Shafiq? Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. Thank you, Dr. Mimi. Uh. And also, uh. Thank you, Nabi, for the question. Uh, just a small fact, and um, once you are graduated as a chemical engineer, you registered with BEM as a chemical engineer. Punya, apa ni? Uh, as a graduate engineers, you can work. Uh, you can uh, work in uh, any engineering fields. Okay? So based on, on that particular question, can chemical engineer work as a mechanical engineer? I uh, have my fair share of engineering works also, but I work in electrical engineering. 
Okay. So when I work in electrical engineering, maybe some of the term and the jargons that they use, maybe at some point boggles my mind also. Okay. It takes time for me to um, uh, accommodate to the terms that they use. But on basic, I think UTM also uh, at the basic electrical engine, uh, in, uh, electric, electrical punya parts and subjects being embedded in the program. So that particular thing actually assists me in understanding that bucket, the term that they use. So uh, every, uh, for you to be working in another discipline, I think it's not a problem as long as you can accommodate well to the environment and also the uh, the job is being tasked to you. So uh, normally for this particular um, uh, pathway, the company knows that you are what is your background and what is the uh, and what is being expected from you. So training will be provided to you so that you can deliver the job as per required by the companies. Okay. So for me, I uh, I work in electrical engineering, uh, electrical appliances from the company. So it is uh, quite sometimes to adjust to the term and, and also the working environments, but. Uh, unfortunately, some time goes by when you have the skill sets, eh, uh, active learning, uh, frequently asking the superiors on what is the, the key deliverables that actually required by the companies and also uh, having the audacity to uh, contact, uh, having the braveness eh, to, uh, to contact the suppliers for you to be learning from them and uh, uh, is actually assisting you in being a better engineer. So not just relying on books, relying on lecture notes. Uh, for right now, uh, most of the students are relying on lecture notes. Eh? They don't have books, they don't have tables, they don't have the peri chemical engineering handbooks. So that of the, you have to collaborate with other people, with other companies, uh, so that that input actually comes to you through another way, through communications, through a hands-on experience on designing, hands-on experience on assembling, uh, on planning the particular thing. So I think it can be done. And uh, I experienced that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So, maknanya, ini real life punya experience he shared ni. Okay. Even though he graduated from chemical engineering program, but he used to uh, work in electrical engineering related uh, uh, line, okay? And uh, right. you can, right? Because uh, engineering punya basic tu, uh, you already have it. The, the physics, the mathematics, only the application that you can always learn from time to time. Yeah. So okay. Uh, okay. One last question. Yeah. One last question is uh, for Mr. Hafiz. Yeah. So is uh, by Tai Ji Zhen. Yeah. Uh, in Sepang. Wow. Okay. So Ji Zhen uh, is asking uh, this question. Uh, is there any changes uh, on engineers' uh, roles now uh, regarding the IR for? 0.0, the industrial um, revolution uh, 4.0 has been introduced. So does this uh, affect the roles of an engineer? Okay, okay thank you Jizang for asking the question. Oh, Jizang from Sepang. We are actually yeah. neighbors. I'm currently working from Putrajaya, Jizang. So, <laughs> but still uh, we have to follow SOP and we cannot simply have a data session or whatnot. So the question is about, is there any changes on engineer's role regarding IR 4.0? So IR is actually Industrial Revolution 4.0. We have actually talked about this, about IR 4.0 is all about uh, digitalization as well as innovation and technology driven. So uh, I believe in terms of engineer's roles still remain, but group of, of engineers have to accelerate uh, in terms of learnings, in terms of skill development to ensure that we can uh, innovate and we can uh, use leverage on technology to make our work more efficient in the future. So um, the bottom line is, as we mentioned earlier, engineers is all about uh, technical problem solving. So you have to uh, explore more in terms of uh, technology, in terms of what is the new innovation, uh, what, has, what are the, the better solutions to solve a certain problems. So um, I think uh, in terms of roles, it remains the same, but somehow you have to uh, accelerate uh, the learning so that we can be competitive um, as compared to other companies. Lah. I think that's all from me. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nimi and uh, Jizang for asking that question. Okay, thank you very much, eh, uh, Mr. Hafiz. And that 
uh, gives us a great uh, uh, closing uh, remarks from Mr. Hafiz and uh, yeah, and just now from uh, uh, Dr. Shafiq. So thank you uh, so much again to Dr. Shafiq. Mr. Hafiz and of course our dear Dr. Kujiji who needs to leave earlier. Your presence today surely give a lot of benefits and information to our future young engineers. And it is a very fortunate opportunity for them to get such a live and direct sharing from all of you. Uh, thank you again and we really, we really hope we can have you all again in a certain session like this in the future. Dengan menyesal tau, mesti attend again yeah, if we invite you. So uh, now, uh, I am passing this session over to our great MC, Dr. Nohayani, for a closing session. Uh, over to you, Dr. Yani. Thank you very much, Dr. Nini and all the panels. It's very informative discussion. I believe this is an eye-opener for our students and also whoever are watching right now. Okay, so if you like this video, please like and share with your loved one, okay? All right, so I would, I would like to express my gratitude um, to all the panels who spend their time. We appreciate that so much. And then we, I also would like to thank uh, the team behind the screen yeah, to handle the technical part, Dr. Zulaika, Dr. Yana, and Izati. Okay, so with that, um, I end the session. Okay, so see you again next week in another series of our forum. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Bye.